A very good morning to everyone present here. Respected Dean, Professor T.R. Subramanya, our beloved director, Professor V.J. Praneshwaran, all the faculty members of CMR University School of Legal Studies, and my beloved friends. I, Priyanka Rajareddy, from seventh semester BA LLB, on behalf of CMR University School of Legal Studies, would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to our respected speaker of the day, Dr. S.T. Ramesh. S.T. Ramesh, sir, is a retired IPS officer who joined the Indian Police Service in 1976. He has served the state of Karnataka and the government of India for 35 years in many departments. As the Director General of Police of Karnataka's Prison Department, Sir has brought about human rights-centric reforms and progressive changes. In the police service, S.T. Ramesh Sir has brought about many innovations and reforms apart from introducing technology. He has paid special attention to gender sensitization and training of police personnel. After retiring from the post of Director General and Inspector General of Police, Karnataka, Ramesh Sir has been a public commentator on matters relating to police. He has also been associated with a few NGOs. Sir was awarded with the degree of Doctor of Literature by the Tumkur University for his work, Reflections on Law Enforcement. The President of India was pleased to confer on him the President's Medal for Meritorious Service and Distinguished Service. Sir is a member of the Justice A.V. Chandrasekhar Committee, constituted by the Supreme Court of India. Sir, it is indeed an honor to have you today to deliver a lecture on the right of private defense, what the Indian Penal Code says. We welcome you once again, sir. I kindly request you to take over the session. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Priyanka. And, uh... Now let us uh, start. Uh, just one small piece of clarification. Or is the audience in the room or they are all connected online? They are with us on the meet, sir. Oh, they are all in the college premises in a hall and they are there together. Is it? No, sir. No, sir. We are not together, but we are attending it online. Oh, everybody is online. Okay. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Now, um, Thank you, Dr. Subramanya, uh, Vidya, and of course, Priyanka, for this nice words with which you have started the session and kick-started the event. So let us, I will be speaking to you for the next an hour and a half on the right of private defense. As the name indicates, right of private defense is a right given to each citizen, every citizen has a right of private defense. Private indicates that individuals have the right to protect themselves under certain circumstances. What are those circumstances? Let us see as we proceed further. So now, as I said, right, we will call it RPD for convenience. When I say RPD, you know, it refers to right of private defense. Right of private okay, defense. Sir, I'm yeah. so sorry to interrupt you. Could you yeah. please adjust your camera, sir, uh, a little far away so that we can see you? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Tell me if this is all right or you want no, further? Sir, a little more further. Uh, you must push your uh, device a little further, sir. Further? Closer to me or further? No, sir, away from you. Okay. No, sir. How and, is it? Uh, Yes, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Okay, let's proceed. So the right of private defense is available to all citizens of India. That is, and the right of private defense is available against body and against property. What does it mean? Right of private defense is available in respect of body. That's more appropriate in respect of one's property. That means a citizen has a right to protect himself from physical assault, violence, 
similarly a citizen has a right to protect himself in order to protect his property he can take some measures in order to protect his property he can is allowed he has a right to take some steps in order to protect his personal safety against violence i hope this point is clear now right of private defense is also available not only to protect yourself or your property suppose you are present in a particular situation you are entitled to protect you have the right to protect the life of another human being who is along who is standing along with you who is present along with you and also another person's property who is with you so right of private defense extends to protection of one's own property and one's own life or safety at the same time it is also available to protect the life of another individual or another individual's property but under what you cannot blindly observe or exercise this right of private defense there are certain conditions when what under what circumstances you can exercise the right of private defense that let us see as we proceed further now when you exercise right of private defense please note that this right of private defense is dealt with in the indian penal code from section 96 to 106 so section 96 to 106 deal with the right of private defense please see under what chapter this right of private defense is being discussed the right of private defense is discussed under chapter 4 of the indian penal code which has the heading general exceptions now you all learnt no go to the let's stay with the same slide please so the general exceptions talk about certain acts which may be criminal in nature but they are not treated as crimes they are not an offence if committed under circum circum certain circumstances like act of a judge act done pursuant to a judgment act done by a person or by mistake of act believing himself justified by law accident in doing a lawful act act likely to cause harm act of a child under 7 years please remember exceptions its offense committed by a child below 7 years is not an offense because the child doesn't know the consequences of its action act of a child above 7 under 12 of immature understanding act of a person of unsound mind so there are general exceptions similarly it goes on general exceptions this is not a session on general exceptions so i won't deal with that what i want to point out is the sections on right of private defense is dealt with under the chapter right of private defense uh, sorry under the under the chapter general exceptions so right of private defense when i say not answerable to law in the slide which is before you that means if a person exercises an act what are those acts we will see he is not answerable to law that means he is not he is not punishable he is not punishable even if the offense is a murder which we shall see so i hope you understood right of private defense comes under general exceptions when a person commits an act under right of private defense in order to protect life or property he t- it is not a punishable offense it is not is not answerable to law so we proceed further right of private defense is available it is a, what is right of private defense 
the law under right of private defense allows a citizen to use force to protect one's property or one's own person. One's own person means physical body. I have a right to protect myself against any assault. But there are certain conditions. There are certain circumstances. Similarly, I, as I already said, right of private defense is available where an individual is allowed to use force to protect another's life or another's property also. What is the reason behind all this right of private defense? Because the law says, see, the law has evolved. Law, criminal law has evolved in the human society with civilization. Human beings were living in jungles. There was no law. There was the, that's why we call the law of the jungle. So the law of the jungle used to prevail. Whereas, as man's progressed, civilizations came, villages came, towns, countries, and governments came. Law was established saying, these are all okay, these are all not okay. You can't take away somebody's life. It amounts to murder. But if your own life is in danger under certain circumstances, I'm again and again underlining the word under circumstances because that is the key. That is the most important thing. Self-help is the first rule of criminal law. Before you call the police or before you call the government authorities to help you, first you should have the ability to protect yourself only when it cannot happen under certain circumstances you go. So the principle is self-help. We have to empower citizens to protect themselves in certain circumstances. Not in all circumstances. In all circumstances, normally you have to call the police or you have to call the law enforcement authorities. But under certain circumstances, self-help or the right of private defense is provided to citizens. And that is on the principle, self-help is the first rule of criminal law. If you are all okay with that, I will give you time at the end to ask questions and uh, clarify your doubts. Now let us proceed to the next slide. So with this introduction, let us go section by section and see what does this life, law, what does this right of private defense mean and what are the circumstances? So I have given an introduction, section 96 to 106 of the Indian Penal Code talk about right of private defense. As I already said, and it bears emphasis, it is discussed under chapter four, which is the general exception category. So it comes under an exception. Always it is important to see the heading of the chapter because while reading the section, we forget what is the context, in what connection, under what circumstances a particular crime is being discussed. So when you discuss right of private defense, you should always remember it is discussed under general exception class. So section 96 to 106 of the Indian Penal Code deals with, deal with right of private defense. Let us see what is section 96. Section 96 simply says nothing is an offense which is done in the exercise of right of private defense. Okay. If a person exercises right of private defense, which in the normal circumstances would be considered a crime, it is not an offense because he committed that in exercise of right of private defense. A commits a murder, but he committed the murder because he had to protect himself. The man whom he murdered was coming to attack him with a rifle and he was about to press the trigger. And the man did not have time to call the police and he had no time to run away. He had no escape route. It will be treated as an act committed under right of private defense. So it won't be an offense. That's what section 96 
Now let us move to section ninety-seven. Right of private defence of the body and property. Every person has a right, subject to the restrictions contained. Again and again, we are talking about circumstances, conditions, and restrictions that we will see later because that is the key. That is the most important thing. The right of private defence is not a blanket right. Do you understand what is meant by a blanket right? Nobody gives you a blank check. It will always be examined whether those circumstances existed for exercise of the right of private defence. Okay. So the right of private defence, every person has a right, subject to certain restrictions contained in section nine ten, to defend his own body, the body of another person, against any offence affecting the human body. So we can allow. We will elaborate further. Somebody wants to cut off my hand. I have a right to protect myself by attacking him. Okay. How much we can attack? All that we will see. Secondly, every person has a right. Every person has a right to defend the property, whether it is movable or immovable property. of himself or of any other person against any act which is an offence falling under the definition of theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass or which is an attempt to commit theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass let us pass and note a few points i already said right of private defence is available to protect one's human body and also one's property A point number A. Point number B. Right of private defence is available to protect another person's physical body, physical person, or his property. That is B. C. It is whether the property is movable or immovable. Now, land is an immovable property. Gold is a movable property. a motor car is a movable property a house building dwelling house or a building is an immovable property please remember section 97 says the right of private defense extends to body property one another person's body another person's property movable or immovable property there is a fourth item what is it when you are exercising right of private defense in order to protect your property against theft robbery mischief or criminal trespass even attempt to, to commit theft attempting to commit robbery attempting to commit mischief attempting to commit criminal trespass also fall under this category of right of private defense so that is covered in bullet point 3 4 and 5 i have said one's body and another one's property and another movable or immovable property and what i have not mentioned is attempt even attempt to commit an offense under those circumstances right of private defense can be exercised i hope section 96 and 97 are clear and let's move to slide number 4 and we come to section 98 which says right of private defense is the act of a person of unsound mind now general exception says this chapter under section under chapter 4 and section 84 of the ipc says an offence committed by a person of unsound mind is not an offence but there is now further exception suppose an insane person a person of i use the word insane the correct word would be for economy of space 
I have used the word insane person. The appropriate word is a person of unsound mind. A person of unsound mind commits an offense or a person under the influence of alcohol commits an offense. He is exempted from the crime. He will be exempted. Court will acquit him. Court will say he has not committed an offense because he was not in his senses. He was a person of unsound mind in, in one case and in another case he was a person who was under the influence of alcohol. So in, under the influence of alcohol, you lose your normal judgment. Therefore, it's not an offense. But here, if, I'll give you an example. If a person who is of unsound mind comes to attack me with a knife, I am suddenly taken by surprise. I am sitting in my house suddenly this man of unsound mind barges into my house with a knife and wants to put the knife on my body i wake up i react i hold his hand and he is trying to do this because he's a mad person he's a man of unsound mind i give him one kick and then i find some my weapon I am a police officer, I find a weapon next to me, I shoot him, he's dead. The court cannot say, Baba is a person of unsound mind, he came to attack you, he has not committed any offense. No. In the normal circumstances, if he is taken to the court, he will be treated as a person of unsound mind and they will get an acquittal if it is proved. But when I exercise my right, nobody can say just because a person is of unsound mind or a person is under the influence of alcohol, he has a right to take my life. I have a right to protect myself. I have a right to protect myself against normal people, against a person of unsound mind, a alcohol, a person under the influence of alcohol. I hope this is clear and you understood this. Then it says no exception whether minor person of unsound mind, intoxicated person, person with no maturity, person acting under misconception. See, these are all the general exceptions under chapter 4. The chapter 4, the previous sections from 76 to 95 say that if a person is a minor, a person of person below seven years of age, a person between seven years and 12 years of inadequate maturity, a person of unsound mind, a person under the influence of alcohol, person with no maturity, person acting under misconception. Such people, if they attack you and you exercise the right of private defense to protect yourself against life or property, against your own or another's, a movable or immovable property, then the exception doesn't arise. You have the right of private defense. You have a right to protect yourself. Let us now move to section 99. This is the most important thing. It's all very well to talk about right of private defense, but under what circumstances repeatedly we have been saying, and I'm also emphasizing, and if you have an IPC before you, in front of you, you will see that immediately it says certain restrictions, certain conditions certain circumstances. What are those circumstances? As I said earlier, right of private defense is not a blanket right. Come on, go, exercise your right of private defense. No, nobody says that. Right of private defense comes only under very, very specific circumstances and conditions or restrictions. What are they? Let us see. First condition is 
you had no time to call the police or law enforcement authorities somebody is coming and attacking you i am sitting in my house outside the house in a chair a person rushes towards me to attack me he may be any person whether he is a normal person or a, a person of unsound mind or a person under influence of alcohol whatever it may be i am taken by surprise i don't have the telephone next to me do i have the time to take the phone and call the police then the police will come they will take 10 minutes to reach the spot even if they reach immediately even if they react promptly will the assailant the man who is trying to attack me will he wait all for all this period he will finish his job and go i had no time to call the law enforcement authorities to protect me when i don't have enough time and the threat is imminent imminent andre immediate it may happen any minute and i don't have time to call the police even if i have the mobile phone next to me by the time i take the phone press the number search the number press the number get him on the line talk to him will he be waiting will he be watching the man will finish his job and go so the right of private defense can be exercised only if you do not have enough time to take recourse to law enforcement authorities now i am sitting in the same chair in the same in my house outside my house in the lawn enjoying the sunlight the it is winter and it is very pleasant to sit in the sun at the time i get a telephone call he says i am now coming i am coming to your house to shoot you down i get a phone call can i immediately come out take my car go to that man reach that man's house and attack him and say i have exercise right of private defense can anybody answer this question yes or no can they no, can yes yes please please answer somebody said no sir hello Uh, dear yes. students you can use the chat box please put your message for the sir's response oh i see okay yes sir because actually they are muted it's fine so i tried to make it interactive because i'm not seeing anybody and i'm i want to make sure everybody is listening they are following what i said because yes, sir, they are message. they are i'm sure i'm sure very smart children your, your students are very smart and i'm sure they are listening and following probably they already know a lot so it is not possible that if i go take a car and go i don't have the right of private defense the reason is i received a call a threatening call saying i am going to come in the next one hour to your house and shoot you down but i am saying i have time isn't it i had the time to call the police i can go and hide myself i can get into a car and run away from the house i don't have to wait for the man to come there was time for me to protect myself there was time for me to escape there was adequate time for me to call the law enforcement authorities i cannot exercise right of private defense so right of private defense is not available in this circumstance when you have a time when you have enough time when you have adequate time to take recourse to the law enforcement authorities or escape or take whatever steps you want to protect yourself 
so right of private defense will not be available for such a person second a public servant acts who is a public servant i am sure you all know the definition of a public servant which is given in the indian penal code if you are want to refresh your memory i can i can refer to ipc and give you the definition ipc defines public servant as a list is given a public servant denotes a person falling under any of the description a commission a military officer a judge an officer of the court of justice jury man anybody working for the government certain categories so yeah, there is a long list under section 21 of the ipc so we will not go into detail so a public servant is someone as defined under section 21 of the indian penal code so if a public servant public servants have to discharge several duties now let us give an example what is a public servant acting in good faith right of private defense is not available now let us say a police constable goes to the house of a criminal to arrest him while he went to arrest him the job was a genuine job he is a criminal he has to arrest him there is no other alternative it is a duty he is a public servant a police constable is a public servant and public servants have public duties so his duty is genuine public duty duty entrusted upon him by law and is a public duty he goes to arrest a criminal in his house the criminal resists criminal resists he takes a big stone and tries to throw it on the constable the constable moves away and the criminal tries to run away to avoid arrest the constable has a revolver and he shoots him and he dies constable is exercise right of private defense now suppose the criminal in the same example threw the stone a big boulder on the constable the constable tried to escape but it hits him unfortunately and it smashes his head and he falls down dead can the criminal accused person say no 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 the constable came to attack me he had a revolver in his hand so to exercise my right of private defense i threw a stone to save myself is right of private defense available to that man no not because he is a criminal but because the police constable is a public servant he was in good faith he was acting in good faith he had come to perform a duty therefore right of private defense is not available in this slide you are seeing even if not justifiable even if not what does it mean even if not justifiable in the same example i'll make a slight variation a constable who is a public servant acting in good faith comes to arrest a person but he comes to a wrong house there is a mistaken identity address tappagogide so he comes to the wrong place 
and he arrests the man. Actually, he's not the accused. He's not the criminal, but he thinks he's the criminal. At the time, the person says, I am not a criminal, but this constable is coming to arrest me. What the hell is going on? And you know, if a constable has to arrest, he can use force. So there is a constable has come with a revolver, with the chains, with the handcuff, everything. So if I resist, he will kick me. He will use force against me. So this man takes out a revolver and shoots down the constable and goes to the court and says, Sir, I have exercised the right of private defense. Is it allowed? No, because though the constable was under a mistake that he came to the wrong person, he was trying to arrest the wrong person, he was not the criminal, but he was under a mistaken notion. There was a case of mistaken identity. And he is a public servant, he's acted in good faith, etc. There is no right of private defense. That person who shot the constable will be convicted if other evidence is provided. I hope this point is clear. How much of force you can use? Now, somebody comes. One person, I am sitting in the lawn. Let us say, I am sitting in the lawn. In my house. Reading a newspaper. A person comes. And speaks to me violently. And says. Let's say he abuses me. He abuses me. He says, rascal, whatever. I am very, very angry. I am provoked. I go into my room, get my revolver and shoot him down. Am I justified in exercising right of private defense? No, because... The force used in the right of private defense has to be proportionate to the crime. That's why quantum of RPD, how much of force can I exercise? I cannot use disproportionate force. A person abuses me. I cannot take away his life. There is no indication that he is going to assault me. He is only standing 10 feet away and abusing me in filthy language. Yes, he is using foul language, he is using filthy language. That doesn't give me the right to take away his life or even break his legs because the right of private defense, the quantum of force used should be proportionate to the apprehension. It should be proportionate to the apprehension of crime from the other side, whether it is against body or it is property. I hope section 99 so far it is clear. So, Section 99 puts conditions, restrictions, or it explains the circumstances under which right of private defense can be exercised. If you have time to seek the help of Sim, let us stay with this. If we, I'm summarizing, if if the if a person has time to take recourse to law enforcement agency. He has time to escape or protect himself. Otherwise, in whatever manner, right of private defense doesn't apply. The general exceptions in IPC Chapter 4 doesn't apply. That is, a public servant acted in good faith that we have already seen in Section 98. Section 99, another condition is, a public servant acting in good faith 
you can't use right of private defense against them and even if the act of the public servant is not justifiable you can't say you were not justified in doing this so i used force i used right of private defense not available third and most important quantum of right force used in exercise of right of private defense has to be proportionate should be appropriate should not be excessive it should not be excessive so that is the very very critical thing and it is very difficult your judgment becomes very very important and the court will judge whether he has used disproportionate amount of force to exercise his right of private defense that's why i said right of private defense is not a blanket right it's not a right conferred on citizens blindly the right of private defense comes with certain conditions with certain responsibility it is given in exceptional cases where you cannot approach the police you don't have time you don't have time to escape you are caught you are cornered secondly secondly if you are if a public servant is exercising its authority in good faith right of private defense is not available even if the act is not justifiable quantum of right of private defense quantum of force used in the right of private defense is very critical because you cannot use excessive force you cannot treat right of private defense as a license nimage license kottilla baala jagrukate inda baala bhaya bhakti inda jawabdari inda adanna upayogisbe so these are the conditions which i have been emphasizing right from the beginning that right of private defense comes with certain restrictions certain conditions can be exercised only in certain circumstances and it comes with lot of responsibility for the citizen next slide number 5 we move to section 100 which is which talks about right of private defense no in the last section we said you have to use proportionate force now we will talk what is proportionate section 100 says when the right of private defense of the body extends to causing death now you are even allowed to cause the death of a person in the exercise of right of private defense when is that when you apprehend that your own death will be caused you are allowed to inflict even death on a person not to take revenge not to have fun only to protect yourself if you think i cannot protect myself or another person who is standing next to me unless i incapacitate the assailant by causing his death so somebody is coming to cause death to me i am allowed to save myself by exercising the right of private defense by causing death somebody is coming and i apprehend i apprehend i feel now chance illa there is no escape now i i am caught i am cornered mugi to kate when i am thinking like that and the apprehension may be grievous hurt again what is grievous hurt is defined in the ipc under the chapter offenses against human body offenses against human body chapter Sixteen of the IPC deal with offences against human body. Chapter seventeen of the IPC deal with deals with offences against property. 
so chapter 16 defines what is a grievous hurt so when i apprehend when i feel this man is going to cause what is grievous hurt a fracture a loss of a limb a loss of an eye loss of a tooth these are all categorized as grievous hurt and punishable under section 326 of the ipc that comes under chapter 16 as i just now mentioned to you of the ipc offenses against human body now when i apprehend that he is going to break my leg or it's going to cause grievous hurt right your right of private defense extends even up to causing death you can prevent the crime by causing death and go and plead before the court sir i have exercised right of private defense there are certain other circumstances suppose a woman apprehends rape you have all seen in hindi films and kannada films the villain is coming to commit rape of the heroine isn't it haven't you all seen yes when you are when the woman is apprehending a crime of rape and she has nothing she can she has nothing else to do she has to protect her honor she has to do something her right of private defense extends up to causing death even if she if only by causing death she can save herself from rape she is allowed to cause death and exercise her right of private defense unnatural death right of private defense to cause death extends even if you, a person apprehends unnatural lust by force is there all force by force it's happening it's not voluntary none of them is voluntary nobody is going to say come cut my leg nobody is going to say that similarly the right of private defense extends in the case of kidnapping if i apprehend that i am going to be kidnapped or abducted or wrongfully confined that means i am going to be taken locked up in a room that is called wrongful confinement i can't escape again this is a scene which you see in hindi cinemas hindi and kannada cinemas you see the villain is taking the hero or heroine or the relatives of hero or heroine and locking them up you want to escape how do you want to why should you be locked up how do you contact the police how do you tell your relatives if the only way to escape or avoid a wrongful confinement is causing death you are allowed to exercise that as a right of private defense one more category is acid attack i apprehend that an acid is going to be somebody is moving around with an acid acid attack crimes are very common i want to tell you that in the police we have come across several cases of acid attacks normally the acid attack victims are girls young girls women mostly because of jilted love affair the man is interested in a girl she refuses she doesn't oblige she says i'm not interested he takes revenge by throwing acid on a face it's a revenge crime it's a horrible crime it's worse than murder i feel they should be given a extraordinary exemplary punishment because acid attack is heinous the, the victim survives for the rest of her life she lives a life of hell because she will be deformed she cannot get married she cannot pursue her profession she will not have opportunities to get a job people will not provide her jobs people will not provide her house to stay so it's a very very a crime which is not only physical it impacts the emotions the psychology and economic conditions of the victim also so in case of an apprehension please remember the word apprehension maadad mel alla yavadadru ee tara nanage nanu saayo ondu paristhiti ide 
ಗ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಹರ್ಟ್ ಆಗೋ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇದೆ ರೇಪ್ ಆಗೋ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇದೆ ಅನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಗೆ ತುತ್ತಾಗುವಂತ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇದೆ ಕಿಡ್ನಾಪ್ ಅಬ್ಡಕ್ಷನ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ಫುಲ್ ಕನ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಗೋ ಪರಿಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇದೆ ಆಸಿಡ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆಗೋ ಸಂಭವ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ನಿಮಗೆ ಅಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅನ್ನಿಸಿಕೆ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಫೀಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಅಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಹಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ಇಮ್ಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಡ್ ಇಮ್ಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಇಮ್ಮಿನೆಂಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಪನ್ ಎನಿ ಮಿನಿಟ್ ದೆನ್ ನೋ ಟೈಮ್ ಯಾವಾಗ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೂ ಆಗ್ಬಿಡ್ಬಹುದು ಈಗ್ಲೇ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋ ಒಂದು ಭಯ ಅಟ್ ಅಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ you are exercising you are you are you are right you are correct in exercising the right of private defense and even cause death that is section 100 which says under what circumstances right of private defense of an individual extends even to causing death next slide please Section 101 says, I will read it out for you. If the offense be not of any description in the enumerated in the last section, the right of private and the body does not extend to the voluntary causing of death to the assailant, but does extend to the voluntary causing of there any harm other than death. Section 100 talks about right of private defense in respect of body. all the crimes that i mentioned under section 100 in the previous slide such as apprehension of death apprehension of grievous hurt apprehension of rape apprehension of unnaturalist apprehension of kidnap abduction wrongful confinement acid attack all pertaining to offenses against human body this is the gravity of offenses for which you can even cast death now suppose you are not going to face this kind of very serious crimes but still there is apprehension let us say i am sitting in the let us go back to the same example i am sitting in my lawn reading newspaper somebody comes and let us say throws a chappal at me or he is coming with a chappal raised in his hand chappli etondre it's a humiliation in indian society any use of footwear to attack a person is a humiliation you don't get injured but you will feel humiliated yeah it is very bad but can i take the gun and shoot him down when i see him near the gate coming with a chappal i don't have time to call the police i don't have time to escape because i don't have i am cornered i mean i am cornered i can't escape i can't save myself and he is going to throw the chappal is coming nearer 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 and aiming at me can i take a revolver and shoot him no you are not allowed because you can cause harm to him but not death you can hold his hand and break his hand you can catch hold of his hand which is which is wielding the chappal twist him and break his hand incapacitate him or you can give him a kick or you can give him even a lati blow you can take a stick and beat him beat him in his hand so that chappal drops you can cause any harm but not death death is an extreme thing which is available under right of private defense only in respect of a prevention of death a prevention of grievous hurt rape a natural death a natural lust kidnapping abduction wrongful confinement and acid attack therefore is am i visible vidya am i visible please yes sir all okay yes sir everything is fine sir okay i'll continue so section 101 empowers you to cause only that much of harm i already said right a private defense should be proportionate 
చప్పలి వేత్తం మందంతా యూ కాన్ షూట్ హిమ్ డౌన్ యూ కాన్ టేక్ అవిస్ లైఫ్ ఆర్ కాజ్ హిస్ డెత్ సో యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఓన్లీ కాజ్ యూ కెన్ కాజ్ హిమ్ హామ్ బట్ నాట్ డెత్ ఐ హోప్ దిస్ ఇస్ క్లియర్ మూవీ మూవ్ టు సెక్షన్ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ టూ కమెన్స్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ కమెన్స్మెంట్ అండ్ కంటిన్యూయన్స్ ఆఫ్ రైట్ ఆఫ్ ప్రైవేట్ డిఫెన్స్ ఓకే దిస్ ఇస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ సెన్సిటివ్ జస్ట్ గివ్ మీ టెన్ సెకండ్స్ ఐ విల్ స్విచ్ ఆన్ ది ఫ్యాన్ బికాస్ ఐ ఫీలింగ్ వెరీ వాట్ thank you so commencement and continuance of continuance of right of private defense when does the right you are right when does it start when does it end please understand section 102 clearly says your right of private defense starts when you start apprehending danger to your person or property or another person or property it commences at that time and when the apprehension ends your right of private defense also ends you cannot say yesterday somebody phoned up and said you are a rascal i am going to shoot you down next day you wake up in the morning take your gun go to his house and shoot him and say yesterday you telephoned and said you are going to kill me so i am killing you is it right of private defense no because it commences when there is apprehension and it continues as long as the apprehension is there going back to our favorite example i am sitting in the lawn reading a newspaper 10 people come with knives sticks revolver pistol etc they come 100 feet i immediately stand up my god what is happening 10 people are coming towards me armed with the deadly weapons the apprehension has started if i want i can use the right of private defense because do i have time to escape please think over 100 yards away yes i have time to escape because 100 yards or borostrolige i can go and lock myself in a room or take a back door and run away take the car and go away all this is allowed because you want to save yourself now as i'm watching them those 10 people take a right about turn and go back some of they've changed their mind or they think we have come to the wrong place or they think no 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 what is what we are doing is wrong we should not do it they go back your apprehension and you see you are watching you are watching and they have gone they have faded from your eyesight they have gone a long distance now can you take they are running away now can you take a weapon and go chase them and kill them because they were coming with lotties knives and revolvers and you had apprehension but now they are going back they are now they were uh, they were close to you at 100 yards now they have gone away now they are 200 yards 300 yards away 400 yards now you take a weapon and go chase them and kill them is it right of private defense no because you had the right of private defense when you apprehended danger right of private defense ends when they return because they are going in the opposite direction your apprehension has ended so the right of private defense is available during a window period 
what is the window period what is the window when you start apprehending that is when your right starts and it concludes when the apprehension ends when they are going back when they are retreating and they are returning where is the question of apprehension so you cannot so commencement and continuance of right of private defense is to be understood correctly 102 ipc you can't exercise right of private defense outside the window period that window period may be 10 seconds 1 hour 45 minutes whatever it may be you have you can exercise a right of private defense only when the apprehension starts and it ends when the apprehension is over now section 103 talks about we have been talking about right of private defense of the body of property of one self or another now let us see what is the right of private defense pertaining to property there are two important things for human beings one is life everybody loves his life when somebody dies the death is mourned you become sad it is extremely sorrowful to lose a member of the family or a member of the extended family or a relative it is extremely extremely sad so life is very very precious life is valuable human beings take all steps to protect life that's why we have hospitals because we have to save lives that's why we have police so that they save people from being killed and when an unfortunate crime happens they accuse this court to teach him a lesson to restore order in the society the second most important thing for human beings is property my house my car my wristwatch my savings these are extremely important and we have to protect next it comes next only to life so life and property are like the two eyes of human beings protection of protection of life protection of property so the law says that is why the law gives you the right to protect yourself whenever your life is under threat or your property is under threat that is why the right of private defense is given the right of private defense is given not for any other thing only in respect of life and property in case of property what are the crimes you know robbery again chapter 17 of the indian penal code discusses offenses against property there is a huge list it starts with theft house theft house breaking theft a large number of list varieties of cases and each is defined a theft is different from robbery a robbery is different from decoity a mischief by fire is different from other kinds of crimes so right of private defense extends to protection of property what when you apprehend there is going to be robbery you are sleeping in the house you hear some sound you peep out of the window you see three people standing near your door with house with weapons in their hand like gun rifle sickle etc oh they are robbers what shall i do right of private defense comes now these three robbers are they put a screw driver in your house in the keyhole and trying to force forcibly open the house so there is an attempt to commit robbery going on yes right of private defense comes in and what is the right you can even cause his death you can take out a weapon open fire then he can die you have exercised the right of private defense because your house is under attack 
your house is being robbed hbt by night hbt means house breaking and theft a house breaking and theft means criminals break into the house how do they break into the house they can break the window they break the door they break the wall they make a small hole in the wall back side and enter through the hole and commit theft or they put their hand through the window use a machine bend the bar window bar na bend maar bidtare so the window opens the grill opens so they enter the house commit theft these are all called there are different methods of they can even use a false key they come to a house house is locked they use a false key get into the house to commit theft so hbt there are many methods many methods means many modus operandi we use the word modus operandi means method there are many methods by which house breaking and theft can be committed but they are committed by night it can be committed by day also please understand a house breaking and theft can occur during the day but the right of private defense is not available for some reason when a house breaking and theft is committed by day it is only in respect of night to cause death right of private defense is available if a hbt is committed during the day but you can't cause death you can cause other harm any harm other than death you can cause so right of private defense against property to the extent of causing death is available to a citizen in case he apprehends robbery or there is attempted robbery if he apprehends house breaking theft at night or attempted hbt at night fire mischief mischief is fire is defined as mischief in indian penal code mischief by fire punishable under 436 ipc so mischief by fire suppose somebody comes to set fire to your house or a building you apprehend somebody is coming with a torch torch andre divattige divattige thagondu 10 jana bartta idare sudbeku andre idella hallil nadiyutte it's all very common crime in our karnataka villages mane and sutta kododu to prevent it you can use right of private defense even to the extent of causing death and theft mischief house trespass under such circumstances as may reasonably cause apprehension that death or grievous hurt will be the consequence if such right of private is not exercised so you can exercise the right of private defense a citizen can exercise the right of private defense against property and even cause death if he apprehends robbery house breaking theft by night fire and also the same crime house trespass somebody wants to get into your house forcibly house trespass is also defined in ipc forcibly entering a land or a building which is not yours that is house trespass loosely defined and then you apprehend that death or grievous it will be the consequence on walak bandre he will see me and when he sees me he is going to attack me and kill me or cause grievous hurt if you have that apprehension you can exercise the right of private defense next slide please when right of private defense extends to causing harm other than death so we spoke about we have seen right of private defense in respect of life to the extent of causing death 
we have seen right of private defense in respect of life not to the extent of causing death but some harm can be done to safeguard yourself similarly we have seen right up in under in 3 section under in 3 we saw right of private defense exercise in respect of property in the case of robbery house breaking and theft fire and other offenses relating to property where death or grievous hurt is likely to happen there is apprehension of death or grievous hurt now section 104 says yes in those circumstances you can cause death but in certain other circumstances you can cause harm but not death 104 prohibits because ella offense go madakagala it says if the offense committing of which or the attempt to commit which occasions the exercise of right of private defense be theft mischief or criminal trespass not of any of the description enumerated in last preceding section that right does not extend to the voluntary causing of death so if there is any other crime or apprehension of crime or attempt to commit a crime which is not mentioned under section 103 you can cause harm to that person to save your property but not cause death is it clear section 105 against commencement and continuation ditto as in right of private defense against life right of private defense against property also starts when there is apprehension when the apprehension starts and ends when the apprehension completes you see from the window three people standing in front of your house with house breaking implements and a weapon so they are going to create violence they are going to enter your house because they want to commit robbery this is the example we have seen and i have also said you have the right to exercise the right of private defense through the window you can use a pistol and shoot it down shoot him down this is exercise of right of private defense now when you are going in and bringing your revolver to shoot them to save your property to save your house from a robbery being committed or a house breaking theft being committed when you see through the window you see those chaps getting into a vehicle and driving away you cannot exercise you cannot open fire and kill them because right of private defense has ended because they are going away now you can go back call the police ask for protection or leave your house and go to a safer place you have all these options available so the apprehension has ended so right of private def- defense also ends along with when the apprehension ends section 106 talks about harm to innocent person right of private defense against deadly assault when there is risk of harm to innocent very interesting you are exercising right of private defense against life or property but in the process an innocent person dies or innocent person breaks his leg what is it is it a crime no because you are exercising right of private defense legally lawfully but in the process one innocent person suffer this happens very often in police action when the police is facing i'll give you an example when the police is facing a mob a violent mob they often resort to let us say lati if the violence is not too much kallu thurata they are throwing stones they are pelting stones so the police officer the senior most officer present will order a lati charge he will say charge them by lattes and lattes will be used when you use lati charge 
anybody who is in the cr- crowd will get beaten we think when you are doing a lottery chant you don't discriminate whether is crime whether is having a stone is and if you are member of the unlawful assembly you are going to be beaten there will be a somebody watching the fun near the shop he is not in the he is not part of the unlawful assembly he also gets beaten harm is done to an innocent person no this is not an offense similarly when you open fire at a mob when you are opening fire at a when you are opening fire at a mob the police officer a violent mob who have set fire to 25 ksrtc buses five auto rickshaws broken the brain broken the skull of two police officers in such a situation when police open fire is aiming but the bullet hits an innocent person and he dies police have used force in the exercise of right of private defense because policemen of also are attacked but an innocent person has been killed in police firing police officer is not committed a crime he has exercised his right of private defense under 106 ipc but unfortunately an innocent became a victim so 106 talks about even if an innocent person is harmed in the exercise of right of private defense it's not an offense next slide please maybe i already mentioned to you ipc chapters headings of chapters are important when you read a section after understanding i am reading this section which comes under a particular chapter it makes a lot of difference like section 16 talks about offenses against human body section 17 talks about offenses against property you should go through this very well to understand what are offenses against body what are offenses against property only then you will understand the right of private defense what is the right of private defense in respect of life in respect of property these are discussed under chapter 16 and 17 it has direct correlation to chapter 16 and 17 which lists uh, numerous crimes under human body and property and i already told you that right of private defense is given by our law to protect our human body and protect our property because life and property are critical for human beings all human beings if if i don't have money i can't live i will live in poverty i'll be become a beggar so property is important but even more important is life everybody's life is precious next slide now we come to the critical part as you have seen it is not easy to prove the right of private defense before a court of law it is very very ticklish now i could have given you any number of rulings they are all available but i will only highlight one high court judgment you can open it open the link please now i draw your attention to the case of shivappa lakshman saudi versus state what happened this story it's like a story there is a taluk called atni taluk in belgaum district in atni taluk there is a village called saudi <coughs> in that saudi village majority of the population consists of jains there are some kuruba families also but kuruba families are a very small community one chap by name a kuruba man was having a piece of land and his name was
Shivappa Lakshman Savadi is the name. So Shivappa Lakshman is a Kuruba. One day in the year 1988, December, perhaps 18th of December, is an actual case. And the High Court has given its opinion and judgment. So Shivappa was in the in his farm house, in his farm. The Some people from the Jain community, a bullock cart was coming and it came and the bullock grazed the maize crop. Jola the idito, jola and the maid burto. It ate, it grazed over the maize crop. Lakshman Shivappa got angry, he nicely thrashed that man and sent him. That man went back, told his master. Immediately, three people, Keshava, Shantu, and Anna Saab, came by bicycles towards Shivappa Lakshman Saudi. Now, Shivappa Lakshman Saudi apprehended danger. He said, my God, now I have beaten up this Bulakat man and three people from the Jain community who are majority, who are powerful, who are rich landlords and I am a poor man, I am a Kuruba and I am in a minority. They are coming to attack me. Now there is no way I can escape. He had a matchet. Matchet means a machu, a knife. As soon as these three people came near him aggressively, he used the matchet and immediately Keshava was injured and he subsequently died in Mirage Hospital. Shantu was grievously hurt. Anna Sahib had minor injuries. The case went to the court. And uh, Lakshman Shivappa, the same afternoon at 3.30, went to Athini police station and surrendered. He said, I have committed a crime. You can take action against me. So, the Sessions Court, Belgaum, convicted Lakshman Shivappa Saudi. And the matter came up before the High Court of Karnataka, Justice Sham Sundar and Justice Murgod. And it's a very lovely 18-page judgment, beautifully argued, a landmark judgment. That's why I'm citing that. Where they said, Lakshman Shivappa Saudi acted in the right of private defense. Even though in the Sessions Court, there are several interesting aspects to it. In the Sessions Court, the Lakshman Shivappa Saudi did not plead for right of private defense. He just defended himself. But in the High Court, a mention was made about right of private defense and the High Court took cognizance on its own and said, yes, there is right of private defense. What else he could have done? He apprehended danger to himself. And in the circumstances, the action of Lakshman Shivappa Saudi in causing the death of Keshava, causing grievous hurt to Shantu and the simple injuries to Anasa was in exercise of right of private defense. So he was acquitted. He was not punished. He was released from prison and he was sent home. So this is an important judgment if you want. And in para 22 onwards, beautifully, if you can make copies of this and distribute it to students, uh, Vidya, I'm making a request to you. Oh, sir, uh, we'll do that. It will be useful because they can go through at uh, we can't discuss each and every point of this 18 page order in this period. Already right. I'm close, I'm time, I'm not I, I have to give some time for question. I have to close quickly. So this para 22 onwards is a beautiful discussion of the right of private defense. It also says right of private defense cannot be weighed in golden scales. Each Right of private defense, that's why I gave this example. It's very difficult to decide. You and I cannot decide which is right of private defense. Court will decide and even for court, it's a challenge. And they can't put it in golden scales. 
and way because the real circumstances will not be understood you have to imagine so the exercise of right of private defense you you can say ayyo on ad madabodagitto id madabodagitto shivappa odabodagitto idkobodagitto no in this condition all this were not possible that's why you don't use the golden scales and uh, a lot of good points are there it's a beautifully brought out judgment and uh, and the danger was he says the threat must reasonably and in para 27 the judge says the threat must reasonably give rise to the present and imminent and not a remote or a distant danger this right rests on the general principles that where a crime is endeavored to be committed by force it is lawful to repel that force in defense it is preventive and not punitive it is preventive right of private defense is a preventive action not a punitive action so a good reading of this will understand will help you to understand that since time is running out i don't want to spend more time on it and uh, when you get a copy from your people so last slide let us go to the last slide and conclusion as we just now saw in this example right of private defense is preventive not punitive you are not there to punish people you are exercising right of private defense in order to prevent a crime in order to prevent an offense against human body or in order to prevent an offense against property not not as a punishment it is not a revenge taking exercise you are not there to take revenge you just have to protect yourself that is the idea of right of private defense it's a defensive right not an offensive right you cannot take the gun and say mad in martin no down no you are it is a defensive action you are doing whatever you do even causing death in the exercise of right of private defense is to defend yourself is to protect yourself not an aggressive action it's not an offensive action if a public servant acts in good faith it's not an offense under color of office if he comes as an on duty under color of office means as on duty a police officer or a tahsildar or a agricultural officer may be out of duty also he may be on leave that is not the time color of office means when he is on duty the amount of force used should be proportionate please remember that's one of the conditions you can't use excessive force and say i claim i will claim right of private defense no you should have recourse to authorities all this is repetition right of private defense is a very useful weapon for citizens to protect themselves and safeguard their life and property in certain circumstances i again and again underlined the word in certain circumstances normally police when they open fire they do it under the right of private defense they open fire police is empowered to use force in the crpc criminal procedure code gives the police powers to uh, open fire if the violence becomes uncontrollable and the only way to control the um, violence is by use of force very often they use right of private defense if i we fear not open fire police officers would have been killed or public property would have been damaged or public life would have been lost so that is right of private defense so that is this brief discussion on right of private defense next slide next slide please so if you have any questions you can uh, i think the arrangement is to put it in the chat box and uh, i'll have to see it and answer okay thank you all thank you for listening to me and uh, whatever time you are allowed for put for putting questions and unfortunately we have just reached 12:30 and it's uh, time but okay, i'm sure the um college authorities will extend the time by a few minutes to allow questions so that i can i'll be in a position to answer thank you very much thank you thank you so much for this lecture sir it was very insightful now i would like to 
ask the participants to post your questions in the chat box and it will be addressed by sir. Your session was really informative, sir. If any queries are being posted by my fellow classmates and participants, it will be forwarded to your mail, sir. And now call upon Geeta Shreya to deliver the vote of thanks. I, Geeta Shreya, on behalf of our esteemed institution, would like to thank today's guest speaker, Dr. S.T. Damesh, sir. Sir, through your expertise, you have enlightened us on the right of private defense, what the Indian Penal Code says. Sir, thank you so much for such a delightful speech. And I would also like to thank all the participants who have attended this session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you, Dr. Subramanya and Pranish. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir.